Okay, welcome back. So now in this session, we are going to continue from where we left that. That is in the previous session, we had created just a script file. And now we are going to start by writing our first script in Unity. So to start with, uh, if we come back to Unity here, you can see here we had created a script folder and we had added the script target. Now the next thing is the script for it to run, we have to attach the script to any of our game object. So the game object here is the target. Target is our game object and this script has to be attached to this. So to attach this script, one way of attaching it is select this script and you just drag it over target here, it gets attached. Or the second way is, you can select target here, come to add component, and in add component, if you scroll, you have scripts. So in scripts, you click here and choose target. So the target script is attached to this. So after attaching it, we are now going to write our first commands. So double click target, so when we double click target, it will automatically open in Visual Studio because we have linked this to uh, in the previous class. If you come back to Unity here in Edit uh, Preferences, we had set the external tool to Visual Studio 2019. So it opens in Visual Studio. So in Visual Studio, we are seeing the script and when we create a new script, about this 19 lines of script is already created here, 18 lines of script. So in the first you have using system collection, what are these functions, we will discuss it later. But always remember your uh, uh, script starts with public class and the name of your file. This file is named as target, so this will start with target and you will have mono behavior. Mono behavior is the main function that we use in Unity. And in mono behavior, we already have two, uh, that is uh, functions defined here, void start and void update. So we will come to these things later. But as of now, what we want to do using this script is, when the user clicks on this target, this target has to disappear or it has to get destroyed. How do we do this? For this, come to the 18th, uh, 17th line here. And in 17th line here, after void update, open and close bracket, you come to the 17th line and press enter. You come to a new line and in the new line, now we are going to declare a new function. And this function, we call it a, first, we declare it as a private function. So when you type the, it will show you the uh, code tips here. So I select private here, space. And I am going to type void. Void means it is not going to return any value. Huh? We will discuss these things later. So I will type void. And then, the uh, now what we want the program to recognize when the user clicks the mouse. So the clicking of the mouse is recognized in Unity as on mouse up or on mouse down. So the thing is we have to call this uh, uh, function, so we have O and on, O is capital, then M is capital, you can, you will immediately see here the tool tip, on mouse down. Remember this script is case sensitive, so when you type on mouse down, you should remember that O, M and D here are capital, okay. So I will select on mouse down here. So automatically it will add to parenthesis here and open and close bracket. So on mouse down is the event and when you do the mouse down, what it should do, I have to type it here. So what I am going to type here is, I am going to give the command destroy. So here you have destroy, select destroy, what should get destroyed? In open and close bracket, type open and close bracket and in, in between this, you have to type game object. In this game object, G is small and O is capital. Okay. There are two game objects. Remember, the other is used for a different purpose, both G and O capital. Now we are using G A M E G is small and O is capital. Select this and after this line, 
end always the line with a colon. So once I end this line with a colon, so our script is done. Now go to file and choose save all to save the script. The script is saved now. So after saving the script, come back to Unity and Unity we shall test it. So whenever you do the scripting, you have a window here called as console window. So uh, if we actually come to the window over here, you have one console window here. So if you have any error, it will show it in this console window. So if you by chance say for example here in this uh, script, I did not type this colon. Okay, I left it as it is. I forgot to put colon. I will go to file, choose save all. And now if I come to unity and in the console window, if you see it, in general console window, if you see it, it shows an error. See? Error. Uh -huh. Colon expected. So like this, you can use this console window to debug your program. So right now I will close this. I will come back to unity. Uh, sorry, uh, Visual Studio and here I will type the colon and again I will go to file and choose save all and then come back here to unity and in console window now I doesn't have any error. So with this let us test how this is going to work. So for this I will click the play button here. So you press this button maximize on play. So on this uh, feature over here and then click the play button. So when I click the play button, the game is now running. I will bring the mouse over here and I will click it. So as soon as I click, the target got disappeared. So our script is running. So we have successfully created our first script. So let us stop the playback now and go to file and choose save to save everything. So we have successfully created our first script. And one more thing here is, once we have applied, select this target here, when I select this target, uh, you can see here, then you, we have, the target is a prefab, we have dragged from this prefab and we have used this target. And we have made a modification to this target. What is the modification that we have done? We have added a script to it. Now this modification is applied to this one instant of this target. If I want this to be permanently applied to this prefab, then you have to come to the prefab tab here. When you select target, in inspector you have prefab and in prefab, in the last option overrides here, you select and you can see a target script has been added. Click apply all. So when I click apply all, now this script is not only applied to this instance, but it is also applied to this prefab. So that if I use one more quant, uh, that is I will drag and use one more uh, prefab here, then you can see the target script apply to this also. So I will select the second one now and I will delete it. So we, this way we have applied our changes that is the script addition to this target has been applied to the prefab also. Okay now continuing from here the next uh, job that we are supposed to do is uh, now this target should randomly appear at different parts of our scene so that whenever I click it, I need a scoreboard to run here. For every click, the score should increase by 1. And if I shoot some 10 or 20 targets in a uh, span of around a few uh, 30 seconds or 20 seconds, then it should show me the text that you have won. So this is the concept of this game. So to make this target appear randomly on the scene and to run the scoreboard for all these things, we are now going to create a game manager. How do we create this game manager? For this, come to this uh, hierarchy window over here and in 2D shooter, 
now uh, you are seeing an asterisk because it is not saved so go to file and choose save to save it so that asterisk disappears so now here i will right click and now we are going uh, click here and you have an option here called create empty so click on it and you have a new game object created over here double click this game object okay or you come to the property window over here and give it the name as uh, g a m e game m a n a g e r manager g is capital and m is capital so game manager so we have created one new game object press enter and we have named it as game manager so next come to the script folder and in the script folder right click choose create and create a new c sharp script and give the script also name as g a m e m a n a g e r uh, we shall maintain the same naming convention g a m e then i will make m capital n a g e r so be careful about spelling and also about upper and lower cases so now i have created a new script called game manager and what i will now do is i will select this game object uh, manager object and select this game manager script and drag it into the inspector window over here so when we drag it this game manager script is applied to this game manager object so we have applied this script now okay now it's time to add our commands to this game manager so select this game manager script and double click it and this will open now this game manager dot cs script will open in visual studio and again like the uh, previous uh, script this also has this 18 pre written uh, commands over here and the thing here now is now the first thing is we want the game to create game objects so to create the game object the first thing that we are going to do is we are firstly going to add a variable so this variable is a game object so to uh, don't worry you just follow what it is said now and later on these things will be explained in detail so here uh, inside this public class mono behavior inside after this open bracket starts press enter and here we are going to type a new variable and this variable is type is public i will type public space and the variable that we are going to declare is game object g a m e okay game object so here when we are declaring the variable both g and o are capital we select this and give this a name space and this time i am going to name it as target but remember in this name target t is small that script target is t is capital but here the t is small so we have created public game object target end it with colon so we have created one variable as public game object target so after creating this variable next here coming down that is after void update i will type uh, two lines let us come down and we are now going to create a function to spawn new uh, game objects on the screen so for this we are going to name this function as we will type y because this is not going to return any value so let type y and give this the name as spawn so void spawn and then open and close bracket and then click on flower bracket and press enter so now this is the structure of writing a function you have void then the name spawn 
and you have open and close bracket and inside this we are going to define our that is the function. So in this function the first thing that we want to do is we want if you come back to the game here we want this game object to appear at different parts of the screen. So to make it appear at different parts of the screen the thing is the position of the any game object is determined by x, y and z values. For example, if we select this uh, target object over here, you can see here its position is 0, 0, 0. So if I drag it to right, left, this position is going to change. So now we have to first get the position, random position information. And this position information is driven by three values, x, y and z. And since it is a 2D game, we can leave z as 0 and concentrate only on x and y. So, to get the random value, now come back to the scrape. And in the scrape, inside this void spawn, uh, in the spawn uh, function, let us create two variable and this time the type of variable we use is a decimal variable. So all decimal variables are represented as float. So type float float space and the name of the variable is random x capital random x and end it with colon. So we have created one variable as random x. Press enter and create one more variable and give it the name as random y. End it with colon. Now, what we can do is, right now we have declared two variables random x and random y. And for these two variables, let us attach a random number, random x number and y number. So, how we are going to do this is, we are going to use the function random here. So for this first what shall we do is for float random x remove this colon now make this equal to so we are going to assign this a value and the value we are assigning is random or capital choose random and after random press the period button and you get the functions here. So you have random range or capital. So random range you select this and the range will be present between open and close bracket and end it with colon. And here inside this range we are going to type the value. The value is what should be the range. So if we come back to the game here see if I select this and if I move it to the right end here, you can see the value is minus 8.5. So, I want it from minus 8. If I make it plus 8 here, so from here to here. So, the range I will choose is minus 8 to plus 8. So, come back to script here and in the range type, okay. And in this random range, let us type minus 8f then comma then space 8f. So we have given the range for x it is lies between minus 8 to plus 8. So now let us select the same script here copy this. Now come to y remove the colon press space equals press space and paste it but only the range will change for y if i come back to the game here i want it down till here so what is the value it's around minus 1.53 and if i take it to the top it's around 3 okay so we want it in a range of minus 1.5 to uh, this is 0. So, we want it from 
say for example let us keep it from minus 3.5 to plus 3.5 let us keep that range so come back to script here and change minus 8 f to minus 3.5 f okay and this one 3.5 f so minus 3.5 f to 3.5 f so we have allotted float x is equal to random range we have allotted float y also we have created a new variable random x and random y and this is going to choose a random position between minus 8 to 8 horizontally minus 3.5 to plus 3.5 vertically so this is the job we have done till now what is the position information to get this position information we use the function called as vector 3 so if i come back to the script here so the next thing is we are next going to press space here and we are going to declare one more variable and the third variable we declare is vector 3 variable okay and this vector 3 variable the name of this vector 3 variable is random p capital position so we will give it the name as random position this is the random uh, that is uh, vector 3 variable press equals new so we are going to create a new vector 3 okay new vector 3 and this vector 3 will have open and close bracket and in and colon inside this open and close bracket we need x y z and value, uh, values so the x value will be this variable random range so random dot range what we have used here uh, sorry random x okay random x this is the variable the variable value this is the actual so we are using this value and random y select this copy it and after comma here uh, press a space and paste random y again press comma and the third value is z so here the y value should be 0 so we have now got uh, one second there is some problem with this okay here random x i will select this here and i will paste it some typing error is there okay now you have no error here so vector 3 random position equals new vector 3 random x random y and 0 so we have created one random position variable so after this the next job is we have to instantiate or we have to create the object at different position at this random positions so for this purpose press the next line and in the next line now we are going to type we are going to to create objects in uh, unity we use the function instantiate i capital and type instantiate so you will get the command here choose instantiate and in open close bracket now when i type it when i click here uh, you have instantiate and in open close bracket now i have to first define which is the object that i am going to instantiate the object that i am going to instantiate is target so target is the object that we are going to instantiate so here after typing target to give it the position information press period and now type the variable name so the position where it will get instantiated is random position this is the variable that we have created here okay so select this variable and paste it here so random position is the variable press comma 
then after this the next thing we need is the rotation for rotation uh, since it should be zero we use a particular function it is called as q u a t you have this quaternion identity quaternion period identity so this is the command we use it so after this come to the end and press colon so now we have this uh, there is some error for random position so this random position it is not uh, activated okay the problem here is after target we have put a period so remove that period and put a comma so target then you have random position quaternion identity these are the three parameters that we add to this instantiate command so this line has been typed now so now here what we have done is we have created through random positions x and y uh, random x and random y this is given a range in x and y range and this random values of x and y is attached to a random position and we are instantiating a target in this random position with zero rotation so this is the purpose of this function so to test it let us run this uh, function say for example i select this pawn here select this copy come to start and paste it and end it with a colon so after this now go to file and choose save all so the script is saved now come to unity and first in console you just check that there are no errors oh it is showing some errors here so we have to rectify these errors the error it is showing is the screen position is out of view it is showing so to rectify this now come back to script so we have made this range minus 8 to 8 f so let us change this and make it minus 7 to 7 f okay and let us try now save this okay save all now come back to this script and here again if we check it so let us uh, uh, again save this come to script here and let us see there are no errors now right now there are no errors so with this now the next thing we are going to do is we want this script to run in the start so that's why we have already added it in start we have added it now if I run the game so what we shall do is run the game now so when we run the game you can see this has been created at this part okay but there is one error here okay you are seeing an error target object has not been assigned okay okay so the reason why we are getting this error is stop the playback now come back here now if you select this uh, game or this is the script if you select game manager here and in game manager once we have attached game manager script to this now you see a target here this target what we have created uh, here this variable is not assigned so now come to prefabs drag this target and attach to this okay now go to file choose save and clear this now go to now play the game and check it now when i play it now there is no error you are seeing a new uh, that is uh, uh, target is popped up at one position now what we shall do is uh, now stop the playback now come here select this target and in this let us off this okay uh, let us remove this and now if we go here choose file save and run the game and when we run the game the target is now here i will stop the game and run the game again 
and now you can see the target is here i'll close this panel so you can see the script is working that is the target is generated at different position every time the game starts so we have tested it and the next job is to make this appear automatically after a few seconds now right now it is appearing only during the start of the game we want it to appear continuously every few seconds and also we want the scoreboard to run so these two things let us do it in our next session